Uh, so I'm Jessica Mueller. I am uh, both a freelance costume designer, but most, more importantly, and my main job is here at Belmont, I'm the head of the production design program. And I'm the costume design professor here, and I manage the costume shop. Um, so I'm in charge of all the costumes for Belmont's theater and dance productions. I have worked with Nashville Shakespeare uh, Festival in the past as an assistant designer to um, June Kingsbury, who does a lot of their work as well. This summer, it ended up that I was asked to do Antony and Cleopatra actually while I was in Rome on a study abroad May master. So the fun, it's really kind of funny that the, I was literally looking at sculptures of Mark Antony and that one morning got an email from David Ian Lee asking if I would consider designing Antony and Cleopatra. And of course I said yes after um, a bit of some finagling of my summer schedule, but um, it was it was really awesome because then I was able to do a lot of research in Rome for the show. So I started immediately that night. Uh, so he sent me the script and I immediately had to read the script and start my analysis of the text, um, figuring out um, who was on stage when. He helped a lot because he sent me a very detailed character breakdown with a list of uh, who was playing what character, how many costumes they needed, what their looks were. And he also was really helpful because he sent me a, a beginning conceptual design so right at the end of May, um, it was a bit of a rush because um, I had come on a little late. So I started on the trip doing my research and um, text analysis. And then at the beginning of June, we had another design meeting. I had brought um, more my conceptual imagery. I did a um, research boards. And then we had a publicity photo shoot in the middle of June. And then from the middle of June, that gave me about two months to work on finalizing the designs and then building the show. So, But I actually had to have at least two or three looks ready for the photos in June. So um, Cleopatra's first dress and Mark Antony's first look was actually fully completed by the middle of June. Um, and then from there on out, I did fittings uh, starting at the beginning of July and I had another six weeks to get everything ready to go for opening. The director had a very specific vision of the world he wanted to create. He wanted, his word was very timeless. Um, he wanted um, us to create our own world. Um, and so in order to do that, I wanted, and he did not want the old look of Egypt or Rome. So what I do usually, and what I did with this, is I try to incorporate a modern sense with a nod to Egypt and Rome. So, it's so it would connect with a modern audience so that we knew where they were, we knew who they were, and the kind of mood and feel of each world um, while creating our own world. So um, it was really a di director driven. Uh, and then I supported that by um, using a lot of inspiration from uh, Star Wars, uh, the um, Rogue One, uh, he had a lot of comic book, X-Men, um, uh, conceptual imagery, uh, some Western imagery. Uh, Game of Thrones was referenced a lot, uh, so Egypt was very Game of Thrones inspired from, um, oh, the, what's her face, the blonde, <laughs> the blonde one with the dragon <laughs> world. Yeah, so yeah. So with Cleopatra, uh, my influence was really uh, the elements of fire and air. Uh, and it was really a happy accident that that's a big line she says that I am fire and air and so with that I was inspired by the kind of renaissance elements and um, with her being those elements I was also thinking how can I show her progression and her transformation from woman in love um, kind of fighting for her man to queen she's in charge but she's also trying to keep a hold of her power to the very end where she's saying, no, Egypt's not dying. Egypt's gonna live on the way I want it to. So my, my goal for that was to transform her from woman to goddess. So at the very end, she took on that godlike state with all gold, the huge headdress that with the feathers to emulate the air. And then we tied that with the cape and the gown. So it was a big moment of her, her movement to the afterlife. I think costume design is imperative to a story and to the plot. Uh, for me, my job is really to illustrate the story. 
Uh, I work with a director who wants to tell a story, he wants to make a statement, but really the audience gets their visual cues from people in clothing. And for me, I think that my job is really to um, either tell who characters are, and, and I like to also say I like to manipulate the audience a little bit visually, so they know who the villain is, maybe they know who the hero is, um, but I like to clarify who the characters are, where we are, and I think oftentimes it really helps to help set mood and tone in the story uh, for comedies, tragedies. Um, and so for Antony and Cleopatra, I wanted that magical um, world for, for Egypt, so I, I really worked to create that. And then for the Roman world, that sense of mystery um, with them all in these steel gray colors where you didn't know where were they, where was he going with this? Caesar was very hard to figure out. And so I really wanted to help the audience see that there was two different worlds going on and then this kind of weird in-between world of Rome that is trying to take over the world, basically. For me, the themes in Shakespeare are universal. I mean, he's just a good storyteller. And I mean, he really, to me, Shakespeare's no different than HBO today. He wrote, he wrote about sex, violence, and rock and roll on these larger than life characters. And it was action and adventure and comedy and romance. And so I think if you can really get at the heart of Shakespeare and bring him to a modern audience uh, with the beauty of the language in which he used, I think it's just another way to entertain the world and um, kind of appreciate where we've come from as an artistic community, as a literature community, as a human world, but I just think uh, Shakespeare is, uh, he's just so relatable if you really break it down. The stories are about people.